7.35 an hour, that's exactly what I was making as a broke college student with no coding skills, no tech connection, and honestly, no idea what I was doing. Fast forward to now, and I've made 153,000 as a senior data analyst in tech, and I've had a pretty successful career. And I don't have a computer science degree, and I didn't do any crazy boot camps. To be transparent, I do have a master's degree, but I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can skip that and save all your time and money. I've helped hundreds of people do this exact same thing. Like my student Kelly, who landed a six-figure role with a $31,000 salary increase in only a few months. So today, I'm gonna show you the fastest way to become a data analyst. I'm gonna tell you the exact skills you need to learn, what order you need to learn them and how to not waste time on things that don't actually matter. If you're feeling overwhelmed on where to start, don't worry, I'm gonna clear all it up. Let's dive in, shall we? A lot of people take way longer than they need to to become a data analyst and it's because they're wasting time on things that don't matter. So these are the biggest mistakes that waste a lot of time that you wanna make sure you avoid. The first one is course purgatory. They just keep taking courses. I'll take another one and another one and another one. Next thing they know, they've taken a bunch of courses and have nothing real to show from them. Look at me right now and raise your hand if you've ever started a tech course that you've never finished. Yes, we're all guilty. And courses can be a good thing, but they're also overpromising sometimes because courses aren't gonna get you a job. Skills and proof of skills are what's gonna actually get you a job. So once you learn the skills, there has to be a point where you stop taking courses and actually apply them and show them. The next big mistake is learning skills in the wrong order. I see so many people saying, I'm a complete newbie. I wanna be a data analyst. I just started taking Python courses. Why are you learning Python if you're a complete newbie to data analytics? No wonder you think it's hard. You need to start out with the basics like Excel and then go to SQL and then maybe Python. Because honestly, if you don't have basic data skills and SQL mastered, you have no business learning Python. Not only is that gonna be way too advanced if you're a complete newbie, but SQL is like the bread and butter of data and that's gonna be used in any company in any industry. Whereas a lot of companies can't really support Python yet. The next biggest time waster people do is that they use super basic sample data sets. And yes, I'm looking at you, Iris data set, Titanic data set, COVID-19 data set. And lately I've been seeing a Pokemon data set floating around. What businesses care about Pokemon and the Titanic? Who the hell Cash. Yet every data analyst candidate does them. So I promise if you're using these data sets, not only are you not looking good applying to companies, but you're also looking like every other candidate. In other words, you're gonna look basic AF. Instead, you're gonna wanna find an industry specific data set or even create your own custom one in ChatGPT. I just did an entire YouTube video on this. And the next biggest time waster is waiting until you feel ready to start applying for roles. And come here, come close while I tell you this. I've worked in data almost eight years and I still don't feel ready because that is something called imposter syndrome. You will probably never feel ready to apply. There's always gonna be more to learn, more to do, more ways you can strengthen yourself as a candidate, but if you don't actually put yourself out there and try, you're literally never gonna get a job. You miss all the shots you don't take. You know that basketball quote? Yeah, write that down. So don't waste your time on any of those things, okay? Look at me right now and promise, pinky promise. So what should you do instead? There are really only three main skills that you need to get hired. And of course I'm talking about technical skills because you do need business skills and soft skills and yada, yada, yada. The first skill that you need to master, especially if you're a complete, complete newbie is Excel. You don't have to go crazy and know everything in Excel and know it like the back of your hand, especially because now there's Microsoft Copilot. It makes learning Excel way easier, but you do need a solid understanding of basic data stuff like columns, rows, filtering data sets, identifying duplicates, removing duplicates, finding null values, basic functions like sum, average, descriptive statistics, pivot tables, and then if you really feel fancy, XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, index match. And the reason why you should have a basic understanding of spreadsheets is because it is literally the common tool that you're gonna find no matter what company and what industry you work in. Whether you're a data analyst or a less technical role like finance or sales or marketing, everybody uses spreadsheets in business. It's honestly the one Thing that all business people have in common. But not only that, if you don't have a basic understanding of all of these data skills in a spreadsheet environment, it's gonna be even harder to understand in a database environment or a Python environment. The next technical skill you really need to master is SQL. It is the bread and butter for all data roles. It doesn't matter if you wanna go into data analytics, data science, data engineering, analytics engineering, all data roles need to have a solid understanding of SQL because SQL is the language that you can use to talk to the database and pool data, transform it, clean it, prepare it for analysis, 
you're gonna use SQL so much on the job. Not only that, it's also one of the most commonly assessed technical skills in interviews. You'll likely have a live coding interview or a take home assignment that is assessing your SQL skills. So if you don't have a solid understanding of SQL, you're gonna have a hard time getting hired and a hard time performing on the job. And if you wanna get started learning SQL today, I do have a completely free intro to SQL course. I'll put the link below just in case you're interested. And in my intro course, you'll actually build your first mini project in only 30 minutes. So if you're feeling a little uncertain or nervous, definitely start there. The third big technical skill you need to master is a business intelligence tool or a BI tool. Tableau and Power BI are the two main big ones, but a lot of companies also use Google's Looker. It really doesn't matter which one you use, just learn one and learn it deeply versus trying to learn a little bit of every single one. I'm personally a little biased with Power BI because it does have Copilot and it also has really good capabilities with ETL, data modeling, and what else? Was I gonna say? It just has a lot of really good capabilities and I really like Power BI. But Tableau does have a public version that is really easy to use. So if that's easier for you, use Tableau. It really doesn't matter which one you learn. And in your BI tool, you're gonna wanna learn how to make basic visualizations and charts, how to create metrics, how to clean and transform data, and how to make dashboards that actually tell a story with data. And the last tool I'm gonna talk about is completely optional. So do not learn this tool if you have not mastered the things above that I just talked about. And that is Python. Python is an extremely valuable versatile and in-demand coding language, but it's a little bit more on the advanced side. So if you're going for a senior data analyst role or a data science role, yes, you probably should learn Python. But if you're looking for a more entry-level or mid-level data analyst role, you really shouldn't learn Python unless you have the other skills mastered. But if you are interested in learning Python, I'd start out with NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and then maybe if you also wanna get a little more advanced, Seaborn, Scikit-Learn, and other machine learning libraries. By the way, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I have something just for you. My free three step data analytics roadmap breaks down everything for you, like what skills to learn, how to build a portfolio, and how to position yourself for a six-figure role. It helps students land six-figure jobs with 30K salary increases. Links in the description below, so go grab it. It's completely free. Now let's talk about building a portfolio that's actually gonna get you hired. To build a portfolio, you have to showcase your skills and tell an entire story with your project, not just paste a link to your project. So you have to start with a realistic business problem for your industry, go through all the steps and all the things you learned, and then end with business recommendations. If you leave all the business domain out of your portfolio and don't actually share a story with your project, you're probably not gonna get hired because hiring managers wanna see that you understand the business and you know how to apply your data skills to business. They wanna understand why you did certain things and how you evaluated any potential trade-offs. And that also includes things that maybe you tried to look into, but there wasn't really anything there or it didn't work out for whatever reason. Hiring managers wanna see the ups and the downs because let's face it, literally anyone can write a query nowadays, especially with AI. So it's not just about writing code. It's about going through the entire process of analyzing data and clearly communicating how you think through and solve problems and communicate the results. And finally, there's no magic number of problems that you need. A lot of people will come here and tell you that you need exactly three Excel projects, three SQL projects, three Power BI projects, but that's not true. You can technically have one really good project that shows off all your skills in one project and that's it. And you're probably only gonna have space for two to three projects on your resume. So you definitely wanna focus on quality over quantity. So that means making two to three really strong projects that integrate multiple skills and tools all in one. So instead of having a SQL project that only does SQL and a Power BI project that only does Power BI, you wanna kind of integrate things together. That's gonna to be the strongest kind of project because it's gonna simulate a real world work environment where you're using multiple tools together to solve one business problem. And those are the things that'll really help you stand out and get hired over other people who don't do those things. And once you have the skills and the portfolio, here's how you can get hired quickly without having to apply to 500 thousand million jobs. First, stop mass applying to every job with the same generic resume that ChatGPT wrote. I promise you hiring managers are smart and they can tell that ChatGPT wrote your resume. It's okay to leverage AI to help juice up your bullet points, but please like write it in your own words. Nothing is going to make you look lazier and more incompetent than just copying and pasting AI slop into your resume because that's literally what everyone else is doing. And I promise you, it doesn't work. It's just flooding all the job applications with a big mess. Number two, network way before you actually need a job. It's not as hard as it sounds. Go on LinkedIn, update your profile, clean it up nicely and connect with a bunch of people. Connect with people in your industry. So people who have a target company or a target role, ask them for coffee chats and go to all the in-person events and conferences that you can because it's way easier to get a job through connections and referrals and relationships than just cold applying. So build up your network 
network ahead of time. That way, when you actually need a job, you have tons of people you know and can reach out to. And my last job search advice, especially if you're new and have imposter syndrome, is do not downplay yourself in interviews. So many people say, I'm just looking for someone to take a chance on me. I just want to break into data finally. Those things make you sound like a complete newbie and super desperate. And people are instantly going to smell that and pass over you really quickly. So don't downplay your skills and make sure you sound super confident and sure of yourself, even if you don't feel that way yet. Trust me, being confident and putting yourself out there in networking is the way to go. And that's exactly how I got my very first data analytics internship. I got my internship while I was in grad school. A local company came and did a presentation and said they were looking for an intern. Everybody else just kind of left and said, yeah, I'd love the job and just walked out. Me, I stayed after. I talked to the hiring managers. I talked up my skills. I pretended to be confident, even though I didn't feel confident yet. And they actually remembered me and admired my confidence and gave me an interview. They interviewed another person as well, but he just didn't seem as enthusiastic and excited. So they hired me because I put myself out there. So truly, sometimes you just have to be delusional and fake confidence even when you don't actually have it. Okay, story time. Back to my student, Kelly, who I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video. Kelly worked in healthcare as a sleep technician. She had no experience in tech or data analytics or anything related to data, or so she thought. Because what she didn't realize at the time is that she had a gold mine of transferable skills from her healthcare job that she could use to leverage and land a data analyst job. Four, six figures and a $31,000 salary increase. Cha-ching! All she had to do is upskill in her data analytics skills and learn all the technical skills. And then when she built a portfolio, she built a portfolio targeting healthcare companies. And she already had so much experience actually working in healthcare boots on the ground that she had a deep understanding of how that industry and business works. And that combined with her technical skills all shown in her portfolio made her a super strong candidate to land her first data analyst role. And it only took her a few months. She worked really hard. She was networking a lot on LinkedIn, sending messages, is learning data every day, but it paid off big time. So I truly mean it when I say that literally anybody can do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a tech background, if you've never coded before, I promise you so many people are in that position and they're super successful. So don't let the imposter syndrome talk you out of it because I literally have a master's degree in data and I still feel like an imposter. Maybe I am one. <laughs> Just kidding. Look, becoming a data analyst doesn't have to take years. It doesn't even have to take six months because if you learn all the right skills in the right order, Excel, SQL, and a business intelligence tool, and you actually build a portfolio and start putting your skills into practice instead of getting stuck taking course after course after course, you can become a data analyst in only a few months. My students are living proof. Now, if you wanna get started learning SQL today, even if you have no coding experience, grab my free intro to SQL course below. You'll build your first mini project in only 30 minutes, even if you you've never coded before. I promise I got you. Otherwise, watch this next video where we use SQL and AI to clean a data set. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.